friends. They are like for a holders. They a they don't want to sell it, but they also like my art. So uh, they gave me the commission, and I got this idea because um, I think about this new species. Is it like a hybrid? The story is uh, um, all the humans they they were written by the the new species. It's like a cold ape. It's like a mix. <laughs> I I already developed uh, one series called a uh, transomination. So I have these uh, code um which I use a lot of uh, code that nice is uh, NFTs. Um, okay. And I, I do a lot of editing and manipulate with the image. Are you like a full-time artist? No, well, I'm a full-time like designer art director and I've worked for, you know, different ad agencies in the area for like 16 years. Wow. And but I studied uh, design in college, but also studied like classical art or drawing and um, color theory at a private art studio where I'm from. And so I have a passion for both design and fine arts nice. and generative art. <laughs> and so I try <laughs> to combine it all together. Yeah, similar. Um, I, I used to have an interior design firm in Taipei. I, I also have a, one a web design company in New York, but I don't do it anymore. Um, like last year, I started to create NFTs, and uh, I uh, so far, it's not bad. I, I sell some decent amount of NFTs. So I started to help yeah, you yeah. on this. Is anybody telling um, you to do it, or you just, uh, did, did you invest crypto before? No, I, uh, st I mean, I went to college for design and that's how I sort of got started. And, you know, this is back in maybe like 2004, 2005, I graduated. And so my career just kind of followed a certain path of, you know, always in the digital space, but, you know, from, you know, online banner advertisements and email marketing, and then starting to do microsites a lot with flash um, and then web design, and then kind of got into branding as well, and UX and UI. So sort of just kept, you know, just kept going through my career. And um, I had never invested in crypto or NFTs until recently, maybe um, in October. And I sort of, you know, fell in love with the community online. And, you know, there's so much excitement in it. Um, it. You know, it's a fun space. And I connected to some different artists and different communities that I really enjoy. And uh, Skojo, as you know, from Niftorian, uh, I used to work with him at an ad agency many years ago. And so, you know, I connected with him more recently. And that's how I found, you know, this program and, you know, getting connected with you. So... I'm artist, I'm also a curator. I curate several shows back to 2013. Uh, I was really pioneer of uh, Bushway Open Studios. Uh, I also wow. have uh, several small shows. Art is, uh, is something that I, I devote myself. I, I love art so much. <laughs> and almost uh, every industry, from music, design, uh, fun art, photography, um, movie. I was a cinema studies major, but I never get into Hollywood, of course. <laughs> <laughs> That's I finally fulfilled my dream uh, when I started my NFT career and you know, when I started to do some VR projects. So I did some 360 tour and also 3D render gallery as well. Um, you already uh, you met several NFTs. <laughs> how, how did you... Uh, how did you promote your NFT? Did you ever like do any shout out or join any uh, clubhouse room? <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm, joining the, I'm joining the like Notorian Mint Monday groups. Um, so that's like the first time I've really had a chance to like talk about my art, you know, yeah. a long time ago. Um, I was, I mean, I've been doing digital art for a long time and I've sold prints on um, this site called Curios and mm -hmm. And, you know, that was kind of cool that art, the founder that reached out to me and um, asked me to create a graphic for the homepage, like when it first launched. Mm -hmm. And then I was invited to show my work in New York and Soho, like in digital frames, but it wasn't right. NFTs yet. You know, it's just like your digital it's art, like on monitors. And on 
you know, oh. rotate through. And I used to post a lot on like Flickr and Dribble, mm-hmm. and I started to get a following for a while. And you know, I had some interesting opportunities. You know, I got to write for Computer Arts Magazine once, um, so that was really exciting. But then I sort of got discouraged in the space for a while. Technology was changing so fast, and um, I'm more on the creative side than the programming side. But the generative art and programming has always been a hobby and a challenge for me. But now I'm just getting back into it after maybe like two years of not creating any generative art. And so I'm really excited about this space again. But I've always been bad at promotion. You know, I post it on Twitter and I post in some, I kind of show in some, you know, different Discord groups that I'm part of. Um, I don't always post links. Sometimes I just post the art to share it, you know. And, um, But yeah, I don't pay, I don't pay for promotion or do any of those things and, or official. The whole thing about NFT industry is uh, there is no pay. Well, I I don't know if people, they pay advertising for that, but, but Mm -hmm. I didn't do it. I I joined a lot of uh, clubhouse last year. I still believe my first collider, probably he or she came from clubhouse. No one, no one really knows that I dropped my NFT. It's unlike a lot of NFT artists, they have a, like a drop party and they have a mm-hmm. uh, shout out together. But when I met my first uh, few items, no one knows. My first mm-hmm. NFT more like a commission. One of my good friends, and he's also my collector, but he collect my fun art, not NFT. Um, it was a, like like during the pandemic, I, I was wondering like, what is the next? I, I don't know what to do. So he gave me some commission. He said, oh, Giovanna, you should tokenize your art. And I say, what? You know, like, it makes some NFT. What? It's just like, <laughs> I, don't, I have a no clue. And um, um, I heard this term, but I'm not sure. And um, the, the good thing is because I, I have uh, some cryptos. Uh, I invest mm-hmm. some Bitcoin and Ethereum, but that was uh, two years ago. So I do mm-hmm. have some crypto in my wallet. Um, this is a, it's a whip now called a blockchain and boost. Um, it's in LA. Uh, they have like every Tuesday. So one day they have this uh, whip now. Uh, the, the speaker was a uh, co-founder of OpenSea. Uh, his name is Alex. Uh, I think it's Alex Atala. Um, mm-hmm. So I asked him, how did I get started? He just said, oh, you, you can just register. Come. It's actually, it's not that simple. Um, it's not simple at all. But uh, I do have some crypto. I have uh, my crypto wallet. So I, I, I linked it to OpenSea, but it, was a, it wasn't really not that smooth at all. Uh, mm-hmm. At the beginning, it's always loading a lot of bugs. And I finally made my piece. It was a more like a commission word. So that's the very first one. It's called Una Note a Napoli. It's just based on a, an Italian love song. And a few days later, I, I received an email from OpenSea. It just say, oh, congratulations, your item sold. And I, I, I thought it was my friend. But I, mm-hmm. I asked him, I said, oh, did you buy it? Because uh, he, he gave me all these idea. And he said, no, I didn't. Because uh, that was <laughs> who brought it but the but the, the only thing I remember uh, after I meant it so I, I went to one of the uh, clubhouse room but it was uh, like a really small room like only 15 people and it's not even about NFT but the host of the room he said he's a early uh, Bitcoin <laughs> investor early Tesla investor and he asked me what I do and close one business I don't want to say I close my company so I said oh I'm an NFT artist so he said oh why don't you uh, send me <laughs> I want to take a look that's the mm-hmm. only place because it's just too specific like no what mm-hmm. no like, I, I'm not even yeah. active on Twitter yet um, I used a Twitter a long time ago, but I don't really, I kind of abandoned that account. Okay. <laughs> Lee probably is him, but I never asked him because I know some, some collider like, like, like you, you, some collider like you, they, they, they will contact me. They say, oh, I, I, I collide you are, but some of them, most of them, they, they kind of a private. And then I feel like maybe Clubhouse is a good place to start. Uh, of course, okay. Twitter. Well, I, I am lucky because I already have a lot of followers because I used mm-hmm. to Twitter for more than 10 years. <laughs> it's, it, I built a, a lot of a real real Twitter follower. We follow each other. It's just a, and some of them, they're like, a, like a people and friends from real life. Mm-hmm. Um, and then 
And the other funny thing is, uh, uh, now everyone knows if you want to promote your, your NFT, you have to have a Twitter account. And <laughs> you, you have to have a Discord. Uh, I'm still not that active on Discord. It's just uh, like so many channels and so, yeah. just too much. <laughs> I don't know how to follow up anymore. Do you do uh, Twitter spaces? So you don't really use Twitter spaces. You use yeah, mostly I, I, yeah well, there's sometimes, sometimes. Sometimes. There's a rapid industry, like changing all the time. And also the um, in terms of the, the government policy, um, but it's also really excited. Um, in my whole life, I always like to do something challenge mm-hmm. in the crypto industry. I uh-huh. would always feel like, wow. I feel the same way. I mean, like I was doing all this digital art and posting. I was real excited about it. But the sharing was different, like on Flickr and, you know, like photo sites like that. And like I, I told you, I got discouraged. But when I got back online and connected with a few artists, that sort of grew. And I just get getting more and more excited about it. And there's just like so many different things out there now with nfts and in the community like like fine art and then like pfp projects and uh, tall (laughs) yeah yeah um i chose like i cut out a foreground for it and i really like that look of having a foreground element with the generative art in the background butterfly really is you know kind of like rebirth transformation and you know, new life and new things, new ideas. Um, so I like that um, kind of symbolism for it. When I originally started, I was working at an ad agency, like maybe 15 years ago. And there was a couple artists that I got really turned on to by doing some research for various projects. Um, one was Eric Notsky, um, who was really big into flash development back in the day. Um, he was the first generative artist I really stumbled upon. And then I came to learn about Joshua Davis's work and then Brendan Dawes and so many other, you know, great generative artists in the space. Um, Jared Tarbell was another one. Um, and I just got so fascinated by the idea of generative art and that, you know, you could create these really complex images, um, from, Uh, to me the code's not simple but from pretty simple code you can create these amazing things um and let the computer run the algorithm so you can get you can run it as many times as you want and get all these different you know various outputs and then save the one that you know that you like the best or and so i think the inspiration came from there and then it was just i was a flash on a journey of you know learning so just action script which has a similar syntax to um javascript and then processing which is also similar but with i think some minor differences in the syntax mm-hmm. but i art aspect and the generative aspect and i struggle with it but i just try to keep pushing forward and learning new things here and there and eventually um, you start simple and then you start layering up complexity so you know i might not be able to sit down and write all 450 lines of code at once but if i keep adding a piece and then editing a piece and then adding a little more over time they start to build up to something more complex this is all art I've created in the last several months. Um, it'll sell for more one day, but I really just create it because I love it. You know, I've been doing it mm-hmm. so long, like 15, 16 years, um, morning poppies. Um, mm-hmm. I did for my brother's wedding gift. The colors are sampled from an image, like this case, mm-hmm. a field of poppies, you know, with the red flowers and the sky. And then as the mouse moves on the canvas, it's been moving in the same position on the image. And then transferring the color um, to the canvas. So this is like an older piece. And when I was doing static pieces, and something I'd like to do is go back and revisit these as animations, but I didn't really have the software technology to do that. So a lot of what I like about when I'm creating these and the movement and the excitement and the animation, I wasn't sharing in the past, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, but now with the new software and screen recording, like here's another one. Um, this was an older piece, you know, a static piece, but it can be be animated. Like I have the code on a hard drive. I just have to kind of 
reopen it and tinker a little bit and then i might be able to bring some recordings back to some of my older stuff which would be really exciting for me um a video i did um it sounds like <laughs> and so um where did you get you know, music um, the music, I found a site to license, like stock music, similar to how you would license, you know, a, a royalty free image for an advertisement, you know, or something. So I search online and I, you know, I have a paid subscription to license the music for it. And I'm trying and it would be really nice to meet um, some musicians that, you know, eventually maybe I could get um, some, you know, uh, original uh, music special for like the mood and tone of the art right now i might spend a two to three hours sometimes just looking for one song um from the stock royalty collections to use with my art and i am currently talking to somebody um who has an amazing voice and she may uh work with me to create some original music for these fun to create it started as um a generative art piece um, in processing again. And um, this was actually one of the very first experiments I did with processing when I, you know, got back into it. And um, I started um, playing around with what's called the hype framework, which was uh, Josh Davis uses a lot. And um, I played around more with it and just added these layers. And then this is a render from those processing sketches, but mm -hmm. I brought it into Photoshop. So this is actually several renders that are PNGs. And then I layered them on top of each other manually in Photoshop um, with a little bit of color correction. So it's nice work. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you can see, I don't know if I have the videos of that one posted online. Yeah. Um, yeah, let me start it over. Like, I don't, um, some generative art, I like the programming and algorithms behind it. Mm -hmm. But when you learn from a book, <coughs> excuse me, the examples are so simple, you know, draw a black line or draw, you know, like a graph. And, it, you know, it's not very artistic in the books the, the actual underlying math is very beautiful but sometimes the graphics they create aren't really visually that exciting you know so i'm trying to get the math and the visuals lined up so it creates something closer to like a fine art piece and you can see if you were to render out like every frame as an image like the, it's all unique you know you could yeah. um i haven't done this yet but you can generate a series of maybe like 30 prints you know from a piece or something like that and have like every frame is different and this one's synced up to the music so it's really two audio visualizers like you can see the lines on the bottom that's really a waveform from the music it wasn't as complex right it was just you know adding circles in random locations on the you know camp. there they can jump around <laughs> yeah the latest ones were the butterfly that yeah you know, we showed earlier and before that i believe it was this one um oh. snow leopard no leopard yeah you can see like i'm still in the process of using circles a lot i mean they can be rectangles or triangles right now some of the built-in shapes in processing the built-in forms that you can use eventually i'd like to start bringing um svgs into here so instead of circles i could have uh, you know, a simple illustrated vector graphic in here, um, mm -hmm. animating or add different graphics in here. Um, but I'm sort of just going step by step right now. So I don't want to like jump ahead, <laughs> you know, to something else. I just kind of want to go through a process of learning. And so each one is iterative. Each one has, you know, slightly different code like this one, um, which I discussed at Mint Monday for Niftorian last week, um, really has like a virtual camera that's spinning around creating 
those circles that look like they're rotating a little bit. So it gives the illusion of 3D space, you know? Um, and I like how the colors turned out in this one too, a lot. Yeah, you work with the circles very well. <laughs> It won't always be circles, but for now, I mean, a lot of these, I'm already stressing probably what the computer is capable of to draw all these shapes, you know, so fast and quickly, because um, it's really creating a circle every single frame, um, and then it's sizing to the music, um, so that's why you get those rings. And then the opacity is changing, the virtual camera is rotating, so <laughs> there's a lot going on here.